Hello everybody, this video is going to be our first lecture video for the course. Uh, we are going to be focusing around the topics for Unit 1, and you can see a brief listing of them here. And we're going to begin by uh, looking at the ones that are going to help you uh, accomplish that first assignment. Now the first assignment is basically getting you geared up to do the work that we need uh, to do. And you can't do that without the right tools. Now in the previous Java course, if you've taken it with me uh, here through Gateway, um, you will have already installed uh, the Java tools, in, in other words, installed Java itself, meaning the runtime environment uh, and the JDK. And perhaps you installed uh, a program called JGrasp or something similar, or maybe you worked from the text editor and the command line in order to run and compile your programs. For this course, I am going to require that you download and install Eclipse. And um, if you would like, optionally, I guess you could install NetBeans as a sideline. But I'm going to be using Eclipse as the baseline uh, IDE for this course. Now, uh, Eclipse is a fairly robust product. I mean, you can think of it in the same category as you would something like Visual Studio, um, meaning that aside from just giving you the text editor, it also gives you tools that are built in to run and test your programs, to debug them. Uh, it does things like auto code completion and suggestion and underlining syntax errors. And if you're coming from that like JGrasp or just plain text world, you'll probably find that to be uh, quite a bit of a help. Uh, the other reason I want to use this IDE and get you used to it is it is very commonly used out in the field uh, by Java developers for a variety of different specific tasks. So um, let's begin by just reviewing the procedure for making sure that Java is installed on your machine. So the first thing you should do is you should go to your control panel um, and you can access it a number of different ways depending on the version of Windows. Uh, this machine here is up to Windows 10. So I'm just right clicking on the start menu and I'm choosing control panel. The other way that you can get to it is just click on your start menu and just type control panel and it should come up. Uh, or if you have an older version of Windows, you can uh, look for it in your start menu. All right, once you have uh, the control panel up, um, a real good tip that you have Java, and you can see I clicked on programs and there are lists right there that I do have Java. But I do want to confirm what version I have and I'm going to do that by clicking on programs and waiting for my list to build here slowly. And I'm going to kind of put myself in position to see the Java stuff. All right, and here we go. Now you'll notice that I have two different versions of Java installed. And I recommend that you do have both the 32-bit and the 64-bit available. Uh, generally speaking, the 32-bit can do just about anything you need it to do, but sometimes there are applications that are written to take advantage of the 64-bit version, uh, in which case you'll want to have that present. Um, now, I think it's important to note that, you know, typically if you are using any sort of Java software, um, and for example, if you were using JGrasp, you have to have this stuff present in order to do your work. Um, but I know that people, uh, I, I think of my kids, you know, they play Minecraft and they have to have that 64-bit version to make it work correctly on their machines. So you may already have it there. Uh, if not, if you just have the 32-bit version, I would suggest you go get um, the other version uh, from the website. You're also going to need the development kit. And... I think that may be a good way to approach this is to go to the websites where we would get this stuff. So I've provided a list of links here and if they look familiar that's because I use the exact same set of links for the Java 1 course. Um, so feel free to just kind of go through each one of these. Now I'm going to click on the first link here and this takes you to the, uh, the Java home page where you can get all sorts of different things. Um, uh, to work with. The second link actually takes us to the spot where we can download the things that we need. Now what is important to note when you're about to do your download is that this particular 
version of Java, the one that they list up at the top uh, as a JDK, um, which stands for Java Development Kit. That will be the most current version, and since our, our new textbook is written around version 8, we do want to have uh, a minimum of version 8 uh, to work with. Now, if you download the JDK, it will also download um, the runtime environment if you're working on a machine that doesn't have it available. So it does both. Because obviously you can't do any development unless Java is installed on the machine. So that's the thinking there. Um, the other thing that you should know is that NetBeans is available right from this spot. And NetBeans is the official development IDE uh, provided by Oracle for working with Java. And it is a very uh, popular tool. I don't know if it's quite as popular as Eclipse, but it's certainly up there. And it also is a fairly decent HTML editor as well. So at the very least, you might want to just download it and play with it and see if you like it. All right. Um, so make sure that you get the JDK uh, and install it. And I'm hoping that most of you have already done that already, so it's not really an issue. Um, the other thing that uh, we want to look at is where do we get Eclipse. And e Eclipse is available uh, from that Eclipse link, which is Eclipse.org in the download section. And I would recommend that you probably grab the 64-bit version. I don't think any of us should be on a 32-bit OS at this point in time. But just to make sure, you can always go to your file folder, right-click on this PC or my computer, do a properties and it should say 64-bit operating system hopefully uh, if it for some reason it has 32-bit you know there are some versions of uh, Windows 7 and Vista and XP definitely XP that are 32-bit um, and in which case you need to download the 32-bit version now if you download the 32-bit version and run it in the 64-bit environment no harm done it will work just fine all right, but I do recommend that 64-bit version. The cool thing about downloading Eclipse is that um, it is not an installable uh, program. In other words, there's no installation program that embeds things into the registry of your computer. It's very simply a download. Now I'm going to click it here uh, and just show you, you know, the the process of actually going through. And I probably have another copy here somewhere. Um, perhaps even in my downloads folder but you can see it's it's just an executable and then when I do run that you can see it's being a little hesitant It will allow you to choose uh, a version. And the one that we will use for this course is just going to be this very first one. Uh, if you're curious about what these other ones are for, I mean, I think they're pretty obvious. But if you're not familiar with Java EE, that would be the Enterprise Edition. It does have some extended uh, features. Um, but keep in mind that Eclipse is one of these languages, or excuse me, one of these tools that is capable of supporting all sorts of plugins so even after you get it installed you can download lots of things to add to the environment so you would go ahead and click this and this does uh, create folders for you but I just want to reiterate it does not embed itself into your registry um, so in other words wherever it will put that installation um, you can actually pick up that whole folder and move it somewhere else or put it on a thumb drive and it'll move right along with. Now they've created this installer here kind of as a convenience to make it, you know, I guess seem like uh, you are installing a full piece of software by giving you a start menu entry and a desktop shortcut. Um, and I, I will uncheck that one. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm not going to let it install onto my C drive. Or maybe I will. 
See, I work with so many different machines. I have a school machine. This is a personal machine. And I didn't mean to click on that. And then I create a folder uh, on my machines where I just uh, put software like this or installation images or, or whatever that may be. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and say OK here. Yep, and I don't want it to just land right there, so I was just going back. So I'm going to make another folder inside of software, and I'm just going to call it uh, Eclipse. So apparently I don't have it on this machine, at least not in this location. I'll say OK. So Software Eclipse. I'll create a Start Menu Entry, and then I'll click Install. Now in essence what this installation is doing is it's just decompressing a zip file. Now I know that most of you are probably more than capable of know, uh, or knowing or you know, completing the process of installing a piece of software, but I just want to point out some of the things that go with it so that uh, perhaps you have a little bit of clarity. Uh, others, um, you know, when we were working with Java, it was a fairly new thing for you, um, and working with an IDE of any sort might be a little bit overwhelming initially, and thus this video. So we'll let this complete. Okay, as this is uh, going, I think that it might be actually a pretty opportune moment to start talking about some of the other things that we need to do. And one of them is to get your textbook. And I have an electronic copy here. And those of you that have been in my classes know that I like to bring up the electronic copy as I'm doing lectures. And this is not our original book. Our original book uh, was a good one for learning all the core Java concepts. Uh, and in the fashion that we are working with uh, command prompt and or JGRASP, we are able to cover all the all the rudiments uh, of Java, you know, language syntax, you know, methods, objects, classes, you know, looping structures, data types, etc. And we got pretty far into um, that book, but as we were getting towards the end, they started to get to the point where they were introducing some graphical concepts. Um, but that book if you remember, it was written around an older version of Java, and we even had to make tweaks to, you know, the way we would compile, just so we were making sure that we were using the right version to get the work done. Uh, our new book is written around Java 8, so um, the graphical components that we'll be learning will be based on this technology called Java FX, and Java FX is the modern way of creating uh, graphical user interfaces using Java and that's where we're going to begin this course so I thought it was kind of a, a good way to kind of bring us into uh, this more advanced course by doing something a, a little bit more on the fun side and I know some of you have experimented already with some graphical stuff um, at least with dialog boxes um, and this is going to help us take it up uh, at least a notch from there all right. With that aside, I do recommend that you also go back and, at the very least, peruse some of these uh, early chapters here. What is going to be very important to us are these higher level object and classes, object oriented things, inheritance and super classes, and um, uh, overriding methods, uh, etc. And I'm just kind of taking the assumption that you guys learned the stuff from the first course, and we really don't need to go back much and review these concepts, especially the ones chapter 9, uh, 10, and 11. Uh, we will talk about those things, so when you feel weak on that topic, you can always go back to these chapters and look at their examples or back to our old textbook. 
Uh, I am going to do some stuff on exception handling and abstract classes, but those aren't going to be uh, initially. Uh, the first part of the course is going to be these uh, three chapters, 14, 15, and 16. And um, w once again, with the focus being on how to work with the Java graphical uh, tools. All right, so I'm going to switch back and see where Eclipse is at. It's all done. And then I'm going to just click Launch and bring it up on the screen just to make sure it's running. Now, if you installed Eclipse previously, and some of you have uh, during the first Java course, it was an extra credit assignment, um, you most likely have the Luna version, and you can see that this one is the Mars version. Um, this one is updated to support uh, some of the more modern uh, you know, Java 8 features and plus, you know, general fixes to the software overall. Now, once you have the uh, Eclipse software up and running, it will prompt you for a workspace. Now, where you choose to do your work is very much up to you. This is the default. So it will find your user directory uh, on your Windows machine and put everything that you do inside that workspace. Now that might work for you or it might not work for you. For me personally, I like to put things in a place that if I'm working on one machine to the next, um, a cloud-based service is more most logical for me. So um, I put all my school stuff on my Google Drive, so I'm actually going to go into Google Drive, um, go into the Java Programming 2 folder, and you can see I already have a workspace uh, created. Uh, we did this the other night in the classroom. And so I'm just going to select this folder, and then all the stuff that I'm going to do is going to drop in there. Now, the one thing that I, I see here it says use this as the default and do not ask again. And that I'm actually going to check that. You do not have to check that. Uh, that is up to you because you might go from machine to machine and want to put it in different spots. So I'm going to say OK. And then we'll just bring up the interface and take a quick look. And then uh, just taking note here that if you get this far, you've got your Java components installed, you've got Eclipse installed and up and running, you're basically all set to go. Um, now you can do all the work that you need. Um, I'm going to be ending this video here, and then I'll be creating a new video where we're actually going to dig into some of the topics that we're going to be talking about uh, in Chapter 14. Um, there are great videos out there, uh, both on YouTube. There's uh, some good ones in Linda, too, about how to work with the Eclipse environment. Uh, I'll be showing you little tips and tricks as we go. Uh, I think it's fairly intuitive, but I know that as you switch into a new IDE, so if you're working, you know, used to working with Visual Studio and you come into this, you know, the layouts are a little bit different. Um, like, for example, they call it Package Explorer. In Visual Studio, they call it Solution Explorer, and that's usually over here on the right. Um, so you get to learn these things and uh, hopefully get flexible with um, how things work. All right, this video ends here. I uh, hope you were successful in your install. If you were, take your screenshots as uh, described and upload to Blackboard and consider yourself done with this step. And then move forward and start reading Chapter 14.